Hi guys, my name is Emmanuel. Welcome back to my channel. And uh, before we actually go to today's video, I want to show you a very short video I saw off the internet. And um, I'm actually a huge lover of dogs. So if you love dogs as well, let me know in the comment section. We'll probably will have a gist later, right? Uh, meanwhile, let's see what the video is about. Look at those pretty eyes. Ooh, you. Oh my god, wasn't that cute? I hope you smiled at least, because we're about to go into some serious coding. Yeah. Now, today we're talking about aliases. Before you actually get started, please, if you haven't subscribed already, just take a second. It's going to be just a very short second. Click on the subscribe button and turn on notification so they are notified whenever I release a new video, right? Now, we're going to be talking about alias today. And if you are into movies like action movies, crime movies, I'm sure you've definitely heard of aliases. Now, it's simply... You can think of it like um, a fake name used to reference or identify someone. Now, for example, my name is Emmanuel, right? But you can call me Mako. Mako is the alias. Now, this same concept can be applied to Swift, where we might want to rename or call a specific type by a different name. And we're going to see how this can be done. So just create a new project. I'm currently using Playground, and let's see how to implement this. Now, you can actually change names or you can create aliases for a simple type or a complex type. You probably just don't like the name int, so you want to call it a different name. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a type alias of or a type alias called integer. So to do that, you're going to use the keyword type alias and we're going to say integer, just like that. And next thing we need to specify the type. So I simply want to call this int. Now, let me show you something very cool. I can create a constant. So let's say let num1 be equal to integer, which is the type alias I just created. And uh, this, sorry, not, integer, not equal to instead, but this is going to be equal to 1. And we're going to create num2 to be of type int to be equal to 10. Next thing we're going to do is to print num1 plus num2. And what do you think the output is going to be? It's going to show an error, right? No. So it's going to show 11 because integer is actually of type int. It's simply just a, an alias for int. Cool. Now, another thing we can do, which is actually what I do in some projects, is to create a type alias for parameters. So we're going to be working with JSON or um, we're going to be working with dictionaries very much in future. So what we would do is probably like create a constant and let's say we call this user. This is going to be a dictionary of type string and uh, any. Now this is going to take in a couple of keys and values. So first we can have name of type, uh, sorry, of value Emmanuel. And we can have um, gender of type or same type of value mail, you know, you can just pretty much have so many things. And this type, which I'm going to be using in so many places, I can decide to change this and simply call this type alias, oh well, just change this to parameter, just like that. So whenever I want to use string any or the string any type, I simply replace that with parameter. And that's it. So if I wanted to create another dictionary, I can simply just call that parameter, just so I don't have to repeat myself. Okay? So you can do this, and it's going to work fine. Now, another thing I'm going to show you is how to use type aliases with uh, closure. Now, in our last video, we learned a lot about closures. And if you don't know about closures, then I'd recommend that you just go and check it out. I'm going to leave a link in the description. Okay? So just go and see what we have to say about closures and learn some things. You can also teach me some things. I'm open to learning. All right. So uh, we're going to create a closure very quickly. And we're going to say let. And I'm just going to call this uh, names. This is going to be of type. Well, it's going to accept two strings. And these strings are going to be the first name and last name. And it's going to return one string, which is going to be the combination of both names. So that's going to be like the full name. 
So this is going to be equal to our closure. And uh, first, we're going we're gonna to have the first name. So first, then we're going to have last name. This is going to be n. And right here, we're simply going to return our first and our last. Wonderful. So how do we use this closure? All we need to do is say names. We can actually just print this and say names and pass in a manual comma and my last name, Aquara, like that. So let's go ahead and run this and we should see Emmanuel Aquara. Beautiful. Works very well. Now, type aliases. What we can do is change this here to something. We can call it name name type I guess so here I'm just gonna call my um, I'm gonna call it name type and this is gonna be the type so whenever I want to reference a string by string argument to return a string I'm gonna use name type and if we run it again it will work as it should wonderful now we can actually use type aliases another way and that's by combining different types. So rather than having a single type, we can actually choose to combine different types and reference those types as one. I'm going to show you what I mean. So I'm going to create two protocols. The first one, how do we create protocols again? I'm just joking. So protocols, I actually have a video on that. If you don't, if you haven't watched it yet, and just go ahead and watch it and like it. So I'm going to create a first protocol and I'm going to call this protocol A, and this is going to have a function to print A. Very simple, world best protocol. The second one is going to be protocol B, and this is going to have a function to print B. Now, let's say I want to have a class that um, extends or implements both of these protocols. What I'm going to do is say class and call this macro and say protocol A protocol B. Now when we do this, we actually need to implement both of the methods in both protocols, right? To do that, we just say um, print A and then print B. Now if we wanted to get rid of these, we could simply merge them to a single type alias. So how do we do that? Simple enough, type alias, and we're going to call this my protocols. And what is the type? They're going to be protocol A and, so we're using the ampersand symbol here, not a comma. So this is saying that this protocol is of type protocol A and protocol B, right? And when we do that, we can simply come over here and say my protocols. And same way, you're going to have to implement both of these methods. And that is it. And I'm sure if you think back, you'd see that um, there are, actually some places in your code that you have done this kind of thing. So if you were to implement a table view, it's very likely that you'd want to implement the delegate and the data source. So you could, if you wanted to, merge them into a single type alias and then call them once. So rather than having like your UI table view data source like this, view data source, and then UI table view delegates like this. You can simply just merge them into maybe table view delegates or whatever, right? And that's that. So we're actually going to be working with um, aliases very well. So prepare yourself and you're just going to have fun. Now, um, we can see the advantages. It actually has its disadvantages. Well, to me, I think they are. Now, imagine you're working on a project that has a lot of files a lot of lines of code and then um, you're you're seeing um, aliases like Trey Songs or The Rock or um, Hulk in your code. As a new developer you definitely well you most likely will not know what they mean and you'd have to start digging deep into your code trying to find what the exact or primary meaning or primary type is. Now this can be stressful so imagine the stress of onboarding yourself into a new code base and then you're seeing types that just don't make any sense. So yeah, you might have to keep this in mind whenever you're creating type aliases, it's very important for you to have them properly documented just so that new um, developers can 
easily understand them. Then you can also go ahead further and make the names very descriptive just so that you can actually guess the type from the name, right? So uh, besides that, it's a very wonderful concept and uh, we're going to be using it while working with networking. So uh, if you have any questions, go ahead, leave it in the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you're notified whenever I release a new video. And see you guys in the next video. Yeah.